One of the most common misconceptions today is that in order to make good art, you need to make it pretty. I disagree! While there will always be a place for beauty and style in the art world, the ultimate goal of art is not to make something pleasing to the eye, but to create something that makes you feel. And this makes me feel. In this video, I want to talk about some of my favorite examples of art that intentionally strives for imperfection, and get to the bottom of what exactly it means for art to be soulful or soulless. I think the first thing we need to talk about is that ugly art is not necessarily the same as unappealing art. I was recently introduced to a short series of animations called Ha Ha You Clowns by Joe Kappa, and I am absolutely in love with it. The funny accents, the crude art style, the fact that they all speak in platitudes, it all comes together to create some of the funniest animations I've seen on the internet in a long time. While I wouldn't shy away from calling the characters in this series ugly, I don't think that makes it unappealing. In fact, I would argue the ugly characters add to the appeal. Let me explain why. A lot of Newgrounds era animators would intentionally draw their characters in a grotesque fashion to add a dash of visual humor to their creations. Creators like Oni, Psychic Pebbles, Gonzo SSM. As a result of this, most have begun to associate this sort of grotesque art style with edgy, inappropriate humor. Even if you're not familiar with these creators, I think there's something deep inside our monkey brains that associates a crude art style with a crude sense of humor. And that's why Haha ha, You Clowns is so funny. There's this underlying sense of dread as you watch that something's gonna go wrong. Someone's suddenly gonna break character and start swearing like a sailor. Or maybe blood is about to go flying everywhere. But it never does. In fact, the one and only time a swear word is uttered in this entire series leads to this scene. Fuck you! Boys, I'm, I'm so sorry you had to hear that. It's okay, that... No, it's not okay, Brifton. It's my job to protect you from language like that. And I failed you. Stop that talk, no, no, you that. Stop. Stop. Call me a pansy, but I find it weirdly refreshing to see someone make something so legitimately funny without making anyone the butt of the joke. I do understand that this series is supposed to be a parody of sitcoms, but even without that context, I still think it's an absolute masterpiece. So, let's take a step back and return to the topic at hand, making a good piece of art without making it pretty. My whole point with that spiel was to explain how the ugly art style of this series makes it what it is. If you cleaned it up, had AI re-render it so that everyone looks like a hot anime babe, it would lose so much of its charm, and it most definitely wouldn't be as funny. If that doesn't convince you that making something pretty doesn't instantly make it a valuable piece of art, then maybe this next creator will. Pilot Red Sun is, without a doubt, one of my biggest inspirations. Even if you don't know him by name, I'm certain a good number of you know his most popular video, simply titled Garfield, a video that teeters the line between a satirical critique of Garfield and an acid trip that only gets worse as the video progresses. Where are the three cheese pizza on? I ate the food. Where are the taco shells? I ate the spoon. Where did all the hamburger helper go? Where you might simply describe Joe Kappa's style as grotesque or ugly, Pilot Red Sun's style leans closer into surrealism, with some of his videos being done in a more dreamlike painterly style, and others being done in this more MS Paint chicken scratch art style. Unlike Joe Kappa, however, this style isn't chosen for the sake of humor or subversion. Instead, the art is intentionally riddled with errors in an attempt to mesmerize the viewer and mesmerize, it does. In his own words, Pilot strives for his animations to have some sort of dysfunctional aspect to them, and to quote the man directly, when an animation contains an error, it distracts the viewer. Thus, when an animation is composed of errors, it mesmerizes the viewer. I'm sure you've watched an anime dub before, and noticed that the lip syncing is quite literally just three different drawings alternating between each other, not actually matching the sounds that the character is making. This is distracting because it's a strange departure from the rest of the animation. Scenes where nobody is talking are fluidly animated, but scenes where characters are talking are stiff. Your immersion is shattered, and the crushing reality that this is a man-made creation and not an actual look into another world sets in. Meanwhile, since Pilot Red Sun's animations establish themselves as off or wrong from the very beginning, they actually loop back around to feel like a more immersive piece of media than most. What might look like an error could actually be an intentional design choice, and what might look like a design choice might be an error. Your mind simply begins to shrug off inconsistencies and focuses entirely on the subject matter presented. Does this mean that Pilot Red Sun makes better animations than most anime studios? Yes. But that's besides the point. Despite the thumbnail, I'm not here to put down artists and studios who strive for beauty and perfection. It's an admirable thing to strive for. No, instead, I just want to gush about how much I love surreal and ugly art styles, and how I feel we can quantify what soul really is when it comes to creation. Oh, 
Right, I actually haven't gone to that last part yet, have I? Around much of the internet, and especially on Mongolian basket weaving forums, the word soul is used to describe a piece of media that any one poster may enjoy. Similarly, one can describe a piece of media that they feel to be off or manufactured as soulless. But what does that even mean, really? Well, to me, I believe that the definition of soul is a quality product in spite of limitation, whether that limitation be technical or personal. One of the most obvious examples of soul are indie games. It's common knowledge that game development is a difficult undertaking. Even companies with all the resources in the world can struggle to make an appealing game. Take Blizzard, for example. So when giant corporations struggle to create good games, it's a given that independent developers would struggle too. So, what's an example of an indie game that I would personally define as soulful? That's right, Lisa the Painful. Lisa the Painful is a full-fledged RPG made by a single man, Austin Jorgensen, also known as Dingaling. I'm sure more attentive players can read between the lines and figure out that this was a solo project. The game was made in RPG Maker, a good majority of the songs use stock FL Studio samples, and the animation is rather limited. However, none of these things stop the game from being an absolutely amazing experience. Lisa is, without a doubt, one of the best games ever made. I played it when I was a kid, and I still think about it often today. That being said, plenty of games are made by solo devs. Being a solo dev doesn't instantly earn you the title of a soulful game. Like I said, it's more about the beautiful rays of effort that shine through the cracks of limitation. It's not THE fact that the game is made in RPG Maker that gives it soul, or the fact that the music has so many FL Studio samples, or even the fact that it's made by one guy. It's the fact that all of it is pretty good, despite that. Lisa's story is obviously the absolute best part of it. It's clear Austin's writing is his strongest suit, but that didn't stop him from putting in effort when it came to everything else. For example, even though the soundtrack might not be as amazing as Undertale's, it still serves its purpose perfectly for each and every single scene. I wouldn't swap it out for anything else. It's all part of a cohesive vision, and seeing that cohesive vision come to life is so much more valuable than a soundtrack that I can casually listen to. So, now that we've quantified soul as effort in spite of limitation, what exactly does it have to do with the two animators I brought up earlier? Well. Everything, actually. Pilot Red Sun's art style might indeed look like a child's first time in MS Paint. However, his animation style shows a ridiculous amount of effort in the most absurd of places. There's a crazy amount of frames drawn for this 5 second sequence, despite the fact that it's quite literally just an alien walking forward. He could have easily been lazy and just drawn two walking frames that get bigger as the alien progresses towards the bar, but he didn't. And that's a perfect example of what I would call soul. The animation isn't good in the slightest. It's not natural, the shape of the alien is hardly consistent all the way through, and he doesn't even look like he's walking. It's imperfection to the nth degree, but that doesn't matter because the soul, the amount of effort it took to create such imperfection, shines through. This is why soul and imperfection are inseparable, and why I felt the need to dedicate such a long section of the video to explaining something that you were probably already familiar with. It's difficult to explain why something that was created with intentional errors can still be appealing without soul being part of the equation. Now, I don't know anything about Joe Kappa or Pilot Red Sun personally. Joe I was only recently introduced to, and Pilot is somewhat of a recluse. But I believe that these two are more than capable of creating artwork that strives for perfection if they wanted to. Their creations are imperfect perfect by choice. So how about we take a look at a piece of art that's imperfect due to a lack of experience? Three years ago, I hit 100k subs and got a play button. A user by the name of Kaizo in my Discord server made this art piece to congratulate me on such an accomplishment. Now, it's clear Kaizo isn't exactly on the level of, say, Van Gogh. But that most certainly did not stop him from creating a piece of art that still resonates with me today. It doesn't matter that Kaizo didn't go to art school, it doesn't matter that he doesn't have decades of experience, it doesn't even matter that he spelled my name wrong. His effort shines through all, and his intentions are unironically beautiful. He saw me accomplish something, and he wanted to make a piece of art to congratulate me. That sort of selflessness is hard to come by these days, and as a result, this piece will stick with me for the rest of my life. Imagine that. Imagine being able to create something meaningful, something that brings joy to people, without any of the necessary art skills. Now, stop imagining, because that's real life. A makeup artist by the name of Patrick Starr recently posted a video explaining how he gifted AI art to his employees as a little bonus for Christmas, and understandably was met with backlash. Comments upon comments about how meaningless of a gift this is, how money would have been preferable, how nothing would have been preferable. Why? What's the difference between Patrick Starr's gift and Kaizo's gift? Well, Kaizo's art had soul. Every single aspect of his art piece was a decision, an effort. That's what really mattered to me at the end of the day. The fact that this random guy in my Discord server went through the effort of handcrafting a piece of art to celebrate my accomplishment was crazy nice and carried more meaning than any piece of AI art ever could. Meanwhile, Patrick may claim he spent 18 hours designing this AI slop, 
But in reality, Patrick was hunched over his keyboard, typing some dumbass prompts and patting himself on the back for it. Seriously, imagine this guy just in a dark room, typing Pixar poster, Pixar style, Asian woman named Marion, black hair, for 18 hours, kicking his little feet thinking about how good the PR is going to be when he posts about it on TikTok. I can't think of anything more dystopian. Now, I know there are going to be some wise guys out there that will point out that AI art can simply be prompted to create those imperfections that I find oh so admirable. For example, in this 4chan thread, one anonymous user presents a poorly drawn picture of Sonic as an example of soulful artwork, only to reveal moments later that this art was, in fact, created with AI. This thread is framed as an answer to the argument that I've presented in this video, that AI can replicate anything, even imperfection. But the moment that it's revealed to everyone that this drawing was actually just an image generated by a machine, any and all value it has is lost. The admiration for the art never came from the imperfections themselves, but rather the idea that a young artist tried their best to draw a character that they like. When you take away the implied story the drawing has, it's nothing, just another piece of meaningless AI slop. AI is capable of doing anything and everything, even imperfections. And that's why AI art will always be the laughingstock of the art world. There was no progression from chicken scratch to top of the line work. There's no meaning or struggle behind any of the work. The only struggle behind it was some asshole at a desk typing a few words and mindlessly hitting the generate button until the machine gave him something vaguely similar to what he wanted. The intention might be there, but the effort isn't. And most would agree that effort is a huge part of what we classify as art. One of the most notorious pieces of imperfect art is The Unfinished Painting by Keith Haring. Keith was slowly dying of AIDS, and the painting was intentionally left unfinished to represent all the life he'd be missing out on due to his condition. It's one of the best examples of imperfection and intent, giving a piece of media more meaning. 37 years later, Twitter user Donald Villager would take it upon himself to complete the painting using AI to fill in the missing space. Now, to Donald's credit, he did this solely because he thought it'd be funny. I'm not here to put him on blast or call him a horrible person. It's just very clear that, from the comments section of this thread, that tech bros didn't realize it was bait and unironically believed that the painting was better completed. One of the most popular pieces of AI art I've ever seen, and it's not popular because of its quality, it's not popular because of its meaning, but instead it's popular because it pisses people off and piggybacks off the artwork of a dead man. I can't think of a more fitting piece to represent AI art. In conclusion, I think imperfection is pretty great. I think little blemishes here and there can add to anything. I think Kobeni from Chainsaw Man wouldn't be my favorite character without all the little moles on her face. And in a similar vein, I don't think much of the art that I like would be nearly as enjoyable if someone put it under a microscope and spent years ironing out every single little imperfection. Effort and intent trump all in the art world, and so long as you do your absolute best and make something that actually has meaning and carries some weight, I think that's all that matters. At the end of the day, even the idea of perfection varies from person to person, and nobody on this planet is capable of creating my idea of perfection. Well, nobody but Ken Ashcorp. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. And if you hated the video, explain why in the comments section below. Either way, I'm gonna go watch some more goofy internet cartoons. Peace.